Uh, kay buti po ng Panginoon, ang ganda-ganda ho ng panahon natin ngayon. And I think we started a little early, no? And which is good because today is uh, the first Sunday of the month. And the first Sunday of the month is, yes, it's communion, no? So we are going to observe the Lord's table today. Uh, we want to recognize Sister Jaffe who came here. She attended our worldview. No? She was the friend, she's the friend of the cousin of Brother Lawrence, no? So we just, we are very rejoicing, uh, we are very much rejoicing, Sister Jaffe, that uh, it's her first time here, no? So purihin ang Panginoon dahil dinala siya ng Panginoon po dito sa lugar na ito. So ngayon po ay titingnan po natin ang atin pong, okay, paksa, and we will be getting text from John chapter 2, verses 18 up to 22. First, let's ask God's grace to be upon us this morning. Father, we, we are very, very much privileged, humbled, and honored, O Lord, that in this beautiful day, Lord, you have ordained that we all come together for your namesake, Father God. Father God, we are humbling our hearts, O Lord, that truly, O Lord, Malaman namin, Panginoon, ang inyong kalooban para po sa buhay namin lahat, Panginoon. Gamitin nyo lamang, Panginoon, ang inyong lingkod o Diyos upang ang inyong mga salita, Panginoon, ay maging tapat na maipahayag, Panginoon, sa umaga pong ito, O Lord. And we pray, Father God, that all throughout this service, Lord, we pray for the Spirit of Jesus Christ, O God, to take hold over our minds and our hearts, that there will be simply purity and holiness, O Lord God. And Lord, there will be the grace, O Lord, to worship, to love you, and to adore you, and to focus our eyes upon you and you alone, Father God. Salamat po, Panginoon, even the ordinance that we will observe today, the Lord's table, O Father God. Lord, we are preparing our hearts. Please prepare our hearts that as we take this time, Lord, to observe the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, O God. Lord, truly, may our hearts, O God, be humbled. May our hearts, O Lord, be filled with your love. Be filled, O Lord, with thanksgiving, with gratitude, O Lord. And as that song says, O Lord, Father God, we will worship you with all our hearts, Lord. Maraming marami pong salamat, Panginoon. Kayo po, Lord, ang nagdala sa aming lahat ngayon pong araw na ito at Talangin namin, Lord, malitaas po kayo. Be lifted up, Lord. Be lifted up, O God. Be exalted, Lord. Be glorified, O God, in our midst, in our hearts. Maraming marami pong salamat, O Diyos. Kay buti po ninyo, Lord. Lord, kayo lamang po ang aming kinikilala at sinasamba. Sa matamis po na pangalan ni Kristo Jesus. Amen and amen. Pasahin po natin ang John chapter 2. Our topic for today is, okay, earthly temple versus Jesus Christ. So we are now into John number 13. No, This is the 13th of our series in the book of John. And we will uh, look at John chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. So today is September 3, no, 2017. So let us read John chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. Let's read it all together. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. For those who were not here last week, the context of this verse is the purging of the temple. Do you still remember? Okay, it was the purging of the temple. It was the cleansing of the temple. Now, what did Jesus do? You still remember? No, what did Jesus do? Jesus entered the temple suddenly. And what did he do to the sellers of the cattle? Anong ginawa ni Lord? No nakita niya yung seller ng cattle, ng ox, ng sheep, ng mga kalapate, ng mga money changers, no? What did what did Jesus do? He he drove them away, no? He drove them away. He purged it, no? He drove them away. 
did we see anyone who, okay, uh, meron pang kahit na isa na nag, ano, na, uh, nagreklamo ng ginawa ni Jesus yon, No, may nakakibu ba? May nakaalma ba when Jesus did that? No one. No? No one. That is why when you look at it, that in itself is already a sign. No? That in itself is already a sign because no one was able to resist the power and the authority and even the majesty of Jesus Christ. No? When Jesus purged the temple, no one was able to resist his power and his majesty. No? Now, we will be looking at this morning, every time, when you look at verse 18, let's look at verse 18, ano pong sabi po doon? Okay, let's look at first the hardened hearts of the Jews. The hardened hearts of the Jews. In verse 18, it says, The Jews then responded to him, okay, etc., etc. No? Before we go to that, whenever the Bible mentions the word the Jews, dun sa book of John, okay, hindi ito yung pangkalahatang Jews na everyone. Okay? When, you, when, they, when it says the Jews, actually it refers to the religious leaders. Okay? It refers to the religious leaders. So, yun yung, yun yung ginawa ni John the Beloved. Every time sabi niyang the Jews, it's, it refers to the religious leaders. Now, how did they respond to the purging of the temple? No? How did they respond to the purging of the temple? Ang sabi nila kay Lord, okay, hindi nakakibo yung lahat ng nandoon kahit na yung mga tindero at tinderang nandoon everyone ano they were ano po they were in awe of what Jesus did they were in awe of what Christ has done no nagulat sila now pag tiningnan po natin what Jesus has done to purge the temple okay was that scriptural was that something that glorified God okay now when you look at their response, ang sabi rito, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Sa Tagalog, anong ebidensya yung pupwede mong ipakita sa amin para mapatunayan mo na ikaw ay may otoridad na gawin ng lahat ng ito? Okay? No? What sign? No? Give us an evidence. Give us a sign. No? So, we can already assume from that question that actually, they knew that what Jesus did was right. They knew that what Jesus did was correct. No? But they were not satisfied. What they wanted to find out was whose authority and in what authority was he doing it. Okay? In other words, they wouldn't admit, they wouldn't accept no, what that Jesus did was right. Instead, they were trying to look for a way, no, to discredit Jesus and to no put down whatever it was that he did no it was a foolish request that revealed their unbelief because the very cleansing of the temple was in itself it was already a sign bakit po sa history ng mga hudyo no one has ever done that in the past and when Jesus did it no one was able to resist the Lord's power and authority to do this. The Jewish leaders would have recognized that this was exactly what was going to happen if the prophecies about the Messiah were to be fulfilled. In other words, if they were faithfully reading the Old Testament scripture, they would know that Jesus coming into the temple was something that was predicted in the Old Testament. No, pinredik siya eh. No? Wala ni isang gumawa noon sa centuries of history ng Jews. Only Jesus has done that. No? So when Jesus did it, when Jesus did it, it was a fulfillment of a prediction. And where will we find that prediction? In Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Okay? Sino yung messenger na yun? That was John the Baptist. Sabi rito, then, eto na. This is the prediction. What is it? Then, okay, let's read it all together. Then, suddenly, the Lord you are seeking will come to His temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come. Okay, says the Lord Almighty. No? So, if they were reading, and by, by, for sure they were, if they were reading the Old Testament faithfully, they knew, ano, they knew that 
the Messiah was going to appear suddenly. No? So ito hindi dapat maging kakaiba po sa kanila. Who was Malachi? IBI students, who's Malachi? What is he? Correct, no? He was the last prophet of the Old Testament. No, He was the last prophet of the Old Testament. Why couldn't the Jews accept the authority of Jesus? And why did they ask for a sign? Bakit hindi nila matanggap si Kristo? Patingin po ninyo. Why couldn't they accept Why couldn't they accept Jesus? Why could why why did they have itama naman that was a prediction no and it was a display of the glory of God of the power of God but why couldn't the Jews accept the authority of Jesus and why did they ask for a sign why did they ask for a sign they should have been ashamed of the way the temple had been turned into a business and for how it had corrupted the worship of the people okay? but instead of confessing their sins the Jews refused to admit their guilt. Okay? The Jews refused to admit their guilt. Okay? So yun po ay major po yun eh. No? They knew that what Jesus did was right, it was correct, it was predicted. But still, ano po? Humirit pa sila eh. No? Humirit pa sila eh. Nagtanong pa sila eh. What sign? What sign? Eh, sign na nga yun eh. Fulfillment na yun ng prophecy eh. Tanong pa rin sila, what sign? What sign can you give us? Why? Because they refused. They refused to admit their guilt. No? They refused to admit their guilt. So, what was correct was that if Jesus purged the temple, they would have been thankful that Jesus did it for them and they would have confessed their sins no, they would have been thankful that Jesus did it for them, but that was not what happened. Jesus purges the temple. He reveals the heart of people. But the problem with the Jews was that they were already hardened. Sa Tagalog, ano pong nangyari? No? Ha? Huh? Bato. Okay. <laughs> Naging bato na yung kanilang mga puso. No? Hardened na yung kanilang mga puso. What they wanted was a sign. What they wanted was an evidence that Jesus was truly the Messiah. We would like to recommend, or not, if not require, lipo. no, not require, no, just recommend. There is this movie that just came out recently, no, Among Christians, and the title of this movie is The Case for Christ. No, The Case for Christ. It is the story of the conversion of no, a uh, tawag dito. Okay, a journalist, an investigative journalist, who was uh, ano po siya eh, uh, uh, tawag dito recognized, prestigious yun, ano journalist. No, kakilala lang kilala po siya. And his story is his journey from atheism, from atheism to Christianity. His name is Lee Strobel. And what happened was uh, very, very hardened na atheist po ito, no? What happened was his wife, yung pong kanyang asawa, na born again. Naging Christian po yung kanyang asawa. Sino na nakapanood sa inyo nun? Ah, okay, okay. Na born again yung kanyang asawa, no? Kainis siya sa asawa niya. You know what he did? This guy, you know what this guy did? Sabi niya, I am going to do an, kasi investigative journalism siya, no? I am going to do an investigation to disprove that there is no historical basis to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. No? There is no historical basis to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. No? Sa tingin ninyo, sino kayang nanalo? Si Jesus o si Listrobel? No? Siyempre, si Jesus. You know what he did? Ah, talaga pong it was a long journey, no? It was a long journey. Interviewing one, uh, tawag dito, uh, one Bible scholar, theologian, even archaeologists, even scientific, scientists, even doctors, etc., etc. And the more that he tried to prove that the resurrection did not happen, the more he proved that it really, really, really happened no the more that he discovered that it really happened until finally there was this turning point in his life 
or turning point in the story wherein it coincided with a case that he was doing that wherein meron siyang isang person that tama ba yung pagkakaintindi ko he falsely accused he falsely accused and this guy no who was almost beaten to death he visited him in the hospital at sabi nung guy sa kanya i've been telling you but you do not want to see i've been telling you but you do not want to see why because they wanted to see an evidence in other words even if the evidence was all there the heart didn't want to see the wa- heart didn't want to believe and that was the problem with the jews no that was the problem they wanted to see a proof an evidence but they didn't want to see now the next thing we will look at is how jesus answered their demand for a sign how jesus answered their demand for a sign okay Uh, wait lang. Okay. In verse 19, it says, Jesus answered, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. If you were not God, can you say this just as easy? No? If you were not God, can you say this just as easy? Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And lang sabi ni Lord, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Of course, no? If we will take it literally, can Jesus do that? Of course, he was able to do, to make the universe in six days. So he can do this, but that is not what he meant. No, it is not literal. So, so verse 19, sabi, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Verse 20, they replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. No? After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said and they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Okay. Last week, nakita natin, the construction of the temple of Herod, when did it begin? It began somewhere in between 16 BC to 20 BC. Okay. During the time of Jesus, hindi pa siya tapos. Kaya nga sabi, 46 years na. 46 years na na ginagawa yung temple, hindi pa rin siya tapos. And here comes Jesus who says, destroy it and I will raise it in three days. Three days versus 46 years. We, we, ano, we see yung pong, ano, no, yung pong uh, tawag dito, amazement ng mga hudyo. No? 46 years atong ginagawa. Kasi sabihin mo, in three days, you can raise it up. Are you out of your mind? No, are you crazy? We've been doing this for 46 years. Hindi ka pa pinapanganak, tinatayo na to. Okay? Wala pa tayo rito, tinatayo na tong templo na to. In fact, it was not yet done at that time. You know when it, 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 it was finally done? It was finally done, siguro po mga 10, something like that, 10 years before it was completely destroyed by General Titus in AD 70. No? So that temple will eventually become destroyed. It will eventually become destroyed literally in AD 70 by General Titus. Okay? By General Titus in AD 70. But now, here is Jesus saying, destroy it! And in three days, I will raise it up. So grabe po yung sinasabi po ni Lord Rito, no? Para pag inisip natin, Anong sign ito? No? At kailan niya gagawin yun? Siyempre, hindi naman kayang i-destroy ito ng mga Jews. What did Jesus mean when he said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days? The meaning is in verse 21. The temple he had spoken of was his, it was his what? It was his body. Amen. No? It was his body. Okay? It was his body. That was not the literal temple. It was his body. Ang ibig sabihin po nito ay ito. Sabi sa verse 22 muna, After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. Ang ibig sabihin po nito ay ito. Jesus was replacing the old temple with a new temple. Jesus was replacing the old temple with a new temple. The old temple was merely a symbol. It was merely a symbol 
But Jesus was the real thing. No? It was a real thing. The temple symbolized the dwelling place of God and the God-ordained method to come to the presence of God. No? The temple symbolized the dwelling place of God, the dwelling place of God, and the God-ordained method to come to the presence of God. And alam niyo po yung God-ordained method na yon, ito yung animal sacrifices. No? But Jesus was saying, this temple will no longer be needed because He Himself will fulfill and replace everything that temple stood for. Okay? Jesus was saying, this temple will no longer be needed because He Himself will fulfill and replace everything that temple stood for. Kaya po sabi po ni Jesus, if you destroy, if you destroy this temple, and did it happen? Did it happen? Yes, it did! It did. Bakit po? Because the Jews crucified Jesus. No? Because the Jews crucified Jesus. The body of Jesus was destroyed by death. Jesus is God. He himself, he himself is God. He doesn't need, no? His body was like that temple, no? Because he himself is God, no? Because Jesus is Emmanuel, the God with us. It actually happened when the Jews crucified Jesus. The body of Jesus was destroyed by death. But Jesus also says, You destroy this temple. Sirain nyo itong templong ito, sabi niya, meaning his body, but I will raise it again in three days. And Jesus was referring to his resurrection. The Jews didn't know that by murdering Jesus, no, in symbolic terms, by destroying Jesus, Okay? That temple stood in Jerusalem. No? They were in symbolic terms, they were destroying the temple that stood in Jerusalem. But what they didn't know was that Jesus will rise from the dead, which means Jesus will raise again the temple which is his body in three days. Maliwanag po. No? Naintindihan po natin, ano? Who was going to destroy that temple? It was actually the Jews. And who will they destroy? They will destroy Jesus. They will murder Jesus. They will crucify Jesus. But it says, Jesus was saying, after three days, I will raise up again. In three days, this temple will be raised up again. Now, what is the connection, the third thing today, what is the connection of the earthly temple with Jesus Christ? Ano po ba yung connection ng earthly temple na yon kay Jesus Christ? I'd like to read something from uh, John MacArthur. No? Ito po ay isang uh, commentary niya para dun sa libro ng Hebrews. Okay? Yung Hebrews, which is also in the New Testament, it is a book, okay? it is a book dedicated primarily for those born-again Jews, for those born-again Jews who are having a hard time continuing in their Christian faith because of the persecution. Their temptation was to go back to Judaism so they will not be persecuted anymore. No? And at that time when the, Jew, when the book of Hebrews was written, the temple was still standing. So the temptation to go back to Judaism was so strong kasi hindi pa dumarating si General Titus. No? Hindi pa din destroy. Since hanggang nandyan pa yung templong yan, hanggang nandyan pa yung Herod's temple, nandun pa rin yung temptation na balikan nila yung dati. Na balikan nila yung Old Testament. Na balika, not Old Testament. Balikan nila yung sacrifices noon. Sabi ni John MacArthur, Even after a Jew received, even after a Jew received the Lord Jesus Christ, this was difficult. Bakit daw po? The Jews had a traditional desire to retain some of the forms and ceremonies that had been a part of his life since earliest childhood. Does this sound familiar no, to some of us? Okay, A Jew had a traditional desire to retain some of the forms and ceremonies that had been a part of his life since early childhood. In other words, Hindi niya kaagad-agad ma-let go, okay? Yung kanyang mga nakagisna na mga tradisyon. Part of the purpose of the book of Hebrews, therefore, was to confront a born-again Jew with the fact that he could and should let go of the, all his Judaistic trappings. But since the temple was still standing and the priest still ministered in it, 
This was especially hard to do. Letting go became le to do. Letting go became easier after the temple was destroyed in AD 70. Now, let's go to uh, wait lang po ah. Please be patient. All right. Okay. Can we turn to Colossians chapter 2 verse 7? Ito, pa na pala. Ito na po pala. Let's read it all together. Sabi rito, These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Jesus Christ. No, The reality, however, was found in Jesus Christ. No, Before we go to the reality that is found in Jesus Christ, I'd like to read to you something that I got from the book of Rabbi Zachariah. Sabi niya ito, uh, yung guy na yon is an Indian. He is an Indian and one time pumunta siya dun sa kanyang hometown sa India. Galing kasi American Indian na siya, no? Sabi niya, sabi ni Rabbi Zacharias, I had just walked through the one, one of the newest shopping malls in New Delhi. It is one of those globalized, globalized reproductions where you see the same stores whether you are in Hong Kong, Paris, Tokyo, or New York. Okay? So, sabi niya, uh, globalized reproductions, meaning yun, ito yung mga high-end na mga brands no, na nakikita niya. What's in the name? A lot of money depending on whose name it is. But you can also walk into the shops in Bangkok or Jakarta and find in popular jargon, what? A knockoff version of the brand name that looks identical to the original. Are you familiar this with this? No? Yung mga tinatawag nilang copy, yung tinatawag nilang imitation, no? Ito yung mga tinatawag nilang, no? Ha? No? So, kumbaga, surplus, yung mga ganun tipo, no? O pasa, ito, imitation, and ang tawag doon, knock-off, knock-off versions ng mga totoong-totoo. So, sino ba sa inyo rito ang merong, uh, tawag dito, copy ng Rolex? No? Uy, ang ganda naman ng Rolex mo. Copy yan. No? Pag tinignan mo, parang totoong-totoo, no? Copy pala, no? Pag, pag tinignan, <laughs> made in China. Pag tinignan yung bag, oh, yung ganda daw ng bag mo. Huwag kang maingay. Copy. No, huwag kang maingay. Imitation yan. Okay? Yun ang sasabihin mo. And, grabe, sobrang dami na po. Lahat na lang may imitation. Lahat na lang merong copy. No? Ngayon, sabi ni, ano, ni Ravi Zacharias, If it is a Rolex you are looking for, the shopkeeper will tell the person who is wearing an original one, you better put yours in your pocket because when you place it side by side with my fake one, you won't be able to tell the difference. Aba, ang tindi, ano? Meron pang ganong ch challenge. When out of curiosity, I ask one salesperson how they were even able to manufacture these, he reprimanded me saying that his fakes were genuine fakes. Okay? And not the fake fakes that the man around the corner sold. Meron palang ganon. No? They are, huh? Class A! Okay. Thanks, guys. No? Class A! Class A. They are genuine fakes. Ano ba yun? No? So, huwag ka nang malungkot dun sa binili mo kasi kahit na fake yan, genuine pa rin. Parang hindi, di ba? Ang hirap ay hindihan, di ba? Parang ang ironic na fake pero genuine. No? Sige na nga, okay na rin, di ba? Genuine fake, no? Uh, and not the fake fakes. When I asked the man of the genuine fakes if his genuine fakes would fail within a little while, he looked at me in the eye and said, so will you in a few years, no? In, in, pa siya, niloko pa siya. No? So, if will, will it fail? Ik, ikaw rin naman eh, sabi niya, baka maunahan ka pa nung, nung, maunahan ka pa nung relong binibili mo, no? So, why are we sharing this? Jesus is not a genuine fake. Okay? Jesus is not a genuine fake. What is a genuine fake? What is a genuine fake? A genuine fake are those external things 
those things we hold on to in this world. And sometimes it could even be our good works. No? These are the things na inilalagay po natin yung ating tiwala. No? Hindi talaga kay Christ, pero nilalagay natin yung ating tiwala ng ating kaligtasan, ng ating pananampalataya, hindi kay Christ, kundi sa mga earthly temples ng ating daigdig, ng ating buhay. Okay? So for example, bakit ka nakakasigurong ligtas ka? Kasi nabaptize ako. That's not true. Okay? That is an earthly temple. No? Baptism is an ordinance, but it does not give faith to us. Bakit mo nasasabing ligtas ako? Eh kasi ito yung relihiyon ng mga magulang ko noon-noon pa. Dito ako pinanganak, dito ako mamamatay. Okay? Naintindihan po natin? Earthly temple. O paano mo nasabing ligtas ka? Bakit sabi kong ligtas ako kasi dito ako nabinyagan. No? Sa simula at simula pa lang, dito na ako nabinyagan. O ano ba yung binyag na yun? Dahil doon ako nabinyagan, alam ko na ligtas ako. Dahil doon lang sa binyag na yun. Oh, dahil doon sa binyag na yun. No? So, that is why the thing with Jesus and the earthly temple was nawala na yung focus doon sa spiritual reality. So sabi rito, the reality is found in Christ. Yung temple, yung sacrifices, and all those things, those just are just shadows. Those are just types. But the reality is Jesus. Amen po? It is Jesus. Now, let's just uh, look for a minute at nine, uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 8 to 12. Sige po. Medyo mahaba itong scripture na to, pero babasahin natin kasi baka sabihin natin, nasa Bible ba talaga yun? Ano? What is the connection of the earthly temple with Jesus? In Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 to 24, now, the first covenant had regulations for worship and also, an, yes, an earthly sanctuary. No? So, that earthly sanctuary, whether it be Solomon's temple or Herod's temple, that's it. A tabernacle was set up, no? Re- remembering yung ginawa noon nila Moses, nila David. In its first room were the lampstand and the table with its consecrated bread. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the Most Holy Place, which had the golden altar of incense and the gold-covered Ark of the Covenant. This Ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the Covenant. Above the Ark were the cherubim of the glory, overshadowing the atonement cover, but we cannot discuss these things in detail now. Verse 6. When everything had been arranged like this, the priests entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry. So, ito, yung, ito po yung mga nangyayari dun sa temple no, na binurge ni Jesus. But only the high priest entered the inner room, and that only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. No, The Holy Spirit... So, Yung Holy of Holies, kung saan nandun yung glory of God. Pwede mo lang pasukan yun once a year, tang pwedeng pumasok yung high priest. Now, listen to this in verse 8. The Holy Spirit was showing by this that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still functioning. Okay? As long as the first tabernacle was still functioning. This is an illustration for the present time indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. So every day, every day, the Jews would go to offer sacrifices, but ang hindi nila alam, shadow lang yon, type lang yon. They will never be able to cleanse guilty consciences. Okay? So sabi rito, they are only a matter of food and drinks and various ceremonial washings. So kung baga, lahat ng yon ay upang i-ready yung puso ng mga tao para dun sa real thing, no? Sabi rito, external regulations applying until the time of the new order. So sabi rito, ano daw yung mga yon? They are what? Ceremonia, ceremonies. And they are what? External regulations. Ceremonial washings. External reg... Puro lang yun pang labas. Amen po? Pang labas lang yun. Outward lang yun. So po pwedeng lahat ng ito, katulad ng mga hudyo, ginagawa nila outwardly, externally, 
Pero wala yung spiritual reality. Okay? Next po. Sabi rito, But when Christ came, okay? When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here, He went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not Herod's temple, that is not made with human hands. That is to say, is not a part of this creation. What did Jesus do? He didn't enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but He entered the most holy place once for all by His, amen, by His own blood, no? Sabi po rito, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For this reason, Christ, verse 15, for this reason, Christ is, who is the mediator? No? Jesus. Okay? Jesus. Not a saint. Not a human being. Not the Pope. Not Mary. Who is the mediator? It's Jesus. No, It's very clear in the Bible. Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal in eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from sins committed under Grabe po. what is a spiritual reality spiritual reality is we have been set free from the sins committed under the first covenant Okay? Also, even us, ni lang yung dun during the first covenant. Sa panahon natin, what is a spiritual reality? A spiritual reality is that we receive Christ into our hearts and He forgives us and He sets us free by faith in Him. That is a spiritual reality, which means we can do all external things. But if it is not in the heart, If Jesus is not real in our hearts, we still have not experienced being set free from our sins. No? Sabi po rito, For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands, verse 24, that was, ayan, ito na, a copy. Ba, nandito rin pala. Mas original pa pala sa Bible. A copy of the true one. No? So yung Herod's temple, Solomon's temple, the tabernacle, it was just a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence. No? So we cannot explain little by, uh, detail by detail this long passage. But what we have seen is that that earthly temple, no, that earthly sanctuary was just a copy of the real one. Nung dumating po si Jesus, nung dumating si Cristo Jesus, obsolete na yun. Okay? Hindi mo na kailangan ng templo. Hindi mo na kailangan ng seremonyas. Yung gagawin natin pag first Sunday of the month na tayo po ay nanggukumunyon, This is not a sacrament. Okay? This is not a sacrament. A sacrament is when you do something, no? In the theology of the Catholics, when you do something and you think that by doing it, you will gain salvation. Hindi po. Jesus already committed, no? Already sacrificed and suffered on the cross for our sins. Okay? When we do this, it is just to point us to the reality, the spiritual reality that Jesus already died for our sins. Okay? Mahalagang mahalaga po iyon. Ngayon, ano kaya yung essence nito? Bakit ito mahalaga para po sa atin? Okay? Let's go to our fourth point. Which do you prefer? A temple made of stone or Jesus Christ? No? Correct, no? Which do you prefer? Alin ang mas gusto natin? Alin ang mas gusto natin? A temple made of stone? Or do we want the real thing? Do we want the copy? Or even the genuine fake? No? Or do we want the real thing? Merong commercial ng real thing eh. Sino y- What's the real thing? Coke! <laughs> no, Coke! Ro- sumingit pa nun eh. Humirit pa ng royal. Coke is the... <laughs> Coke is the real thing. No? Yan yung ad nila. We are the... Oo oh, nga, totoo naman. Parang, parang pag inisi mo, everything else is a knock-off version. RC Cola, di ba? Pepsi, di ba? 
parang lahat yun, knocked off kumpara dun sa, syempre, parang obvious ba, no? I love Coke, no? So, to me, it's their only soft drink, no? It's Coke, no? Everything else is not a real cola. It's only Coke, no? Now, sabi dito, maybe we can look at this one, ano? What is earthly temple? What is earthly temple? Earthly temple, they are buildings. They are made of stone. They are made by man. Okay? They symbolize centuries of tradition. No? They also symbolize human titles. Okay? They also symbolize outward religiosity, rituals, ceremonies, man-made rules, and all religious decorations or trappings. No? Alam nyo, when we were having our church history class, grabe yung, ano, yung time when it were in, sumabog yung Protestant Reformation. Yun kasi yung ating, ano eh, yung ating, uh, ano eh, pinangga, pinanggalingan eh, no? Lahat po tayo, no, uh, pare-pareho yung ating pinanggalingan, No? But in the providence, in the grace of God, the scriptures were brought back to the church. And that was why nagkaroon ng tinatawag na Protestant Reformation. Now, these were one of the things that nangyari dun sa mga churches that embraced the Protestant Reformation. One of the things that happened was, no, the kind of service that was being done was no longer like the masses. Ano po yung nangyari? No more Latin prayers that even the priests couldn't understand. No? Wala na naglalatin. Si mga members, hindi rin nila alam. No? This time, the Bible was distributed to everyone and everyone could now read scripture. No? And you could also find it dun sa itsura mismo ng church. No? If you look at Puritan churches, sabi ko nga, Lord, Puritan church ba kami? Wala man lang kaming ka. No? Dati makulay ito eh. Ngayon, puro all white na lang. Ano, wala man lang kaming ano decoration pero natatawa lang ako kasi when you look at the Puritan churches before, you no, know, after the Protestant Reformation, the only furniture in the church were the pews, the chairs, and the pulpit, and the pulpit. So the, tayo nga, ang social pa natin, meron pa tayong projector, meron pa tayong wow, drums, keyboard and all these things, no. Hindi naman tayo babalik doon. No, what I'm just saying is that if you notice it is simple. Okay? It is simple. No trappings. No decorations. And I'm not a priest. <laughs> okay, just like you, I'm part of the priesthood of the believers. No? I teach God's word. But I'm not wearing any vestments. Okay? Wala po akong dala- uh, uh, suot-suot na mga tawag dito na mga long gown. No? Na, uh, you, 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 know, you know those two, those things, No? The other thing is what, no? The earthly temple is religiosity without accountability. Ito po yung mahalagang mahalaga sa ating maitindihan po natin. The Jewish leaders didn't want to take accountability and responsibility for their sinful disobedience. Ano? They were excellent in what man sees. No? Ang ibig sabihin po nung they were excellent in what man sees, yung image nila sa tao, yun yung importante. No? Ayun mga kapatid, ano kaya yung ano nito, no? Ano kaya yung significance po nitong earthly temple versus Jesus? No? Now that we have received Christ into our lives, now that we have become Christians, is there any possibility as the Word of God reveals to us that we are still looking for religious trappings. Or maybe we are still waiting for a sign or an evidence that what I have right now with Christ, is this really the real thing? No? And we are waiting for that moment wherein we can have every reason to believe this is the real faith. But friends, what do we like? Are we looking for the earthly temple? Are we looking for the earthly temple 
which is what? No? Tradition, human titles, outward religiosity. Nakaka-impress kasi yun eh, sa totoo lang. No? You find something, a big, immense structure. It's impressive. You find a mega church. It's impressive. You find, no, uh, a lot of programs. It's very impressive. All of those things. Anything that is external. Very impressive. Man-made rules. Religious trappings. All of these things. But what is real faith? Real faith is eternal. It is internal. No? Ito yung pangalawa po, no? Probably, okay, check mark na tayo dyan. Wala na ako dyang problema. Okay na ako. Hindi ko na kailangan ng evidences. Shoot na shoot na ako dito. I am very, very happy with my faith in the Lord right now. I have severed with all man-made traditions. Wala na ako nitong mga to. Hindi na ako nangumumpisal. Diretso na ako kay Lord. Nagpe-pray na ako lahat-lahat. Pero ito po, religiosity without accountability. You know why? Come to think of it, in the past, okay, when we were still in our former religion, did anyone ask you if you read the Bible for that day? No one asked. Did anyone ask us? No. Did anyone ask us? Uh, did you pray this morning? No one asks. No one asks. Does anyone ask us? Did you have your quiet time? Did anyone ask us? No. In other words. Wala nga yung mga yun. Wala yung mga yun. Correct po ba? No? Pag magsisimba ka, lalabas ka, walang nakaalam kung ano talaga yung nangyayari sa yung buhay. Correct? Pag sumimba ka, no? walang nakakaalam kung may problema ka ba, kung pwede ka bang ipag-pray, kung pwede ka pang tulungan. No? Wala rin nakakaalam kung kanina may binuntal kang kapitbahay. Wala rin nakakaalam kung kanina meron kang sinuntok. Walang nakakaalam nung mga yun. No? In other words, no? when we are into an earthly temple, when we are into religiosity, okay, we can come and go. We can come and go. And there is no accountability. Kaya po di po ba, ang tawag po sa mga chapel or sa mga simbahan, sa mga nag a sa atin po, ang tawag sa atin, we're members. Theologically, it means members of the body of Christ. No? Pero kapag wala tayo rin sa idea ng we're members of the body of Christ, ang tawag sa atin, ano? Correct. Parishioners. Parishioners. And what is the main idea with parishioners? Parishioners means you just go to the parish no? once a week. You are a parishioner. You are an attendee. No? You just you are a parishioner in that local uh, in that local church, no? Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 to 5. Sabi po dito, this then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Verse 5, Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, what does the Bible say? Each will receive their praise from God. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, sinasabi po nitong verse na to, tayo pong lahat at ang bawat isa po sa atin ay may kanikiniyang pananagutan sa Diyos. Mm-hmm. Tayo po, bawat isa, ay may kanikiniyang pananagutan sa Diyos. Hindi na tayo, no, kung Christian sa tayo, we are gonna be judged not to be condemned, not to go to hell, but we will be judged according dun sa anong ginawa natin dun sa bagong buhay na pinagkaloob ng Panginoon sa atin. Okay? We will be judged according dun sa anong ginawa natin dun sa bagong buhay na pinagkaloob. Sabi, hindi natin ito pwedeng tanggalin sa Bible. No? Ang clear eh. Each 
Each will receive their praise. This is not genuine faith. This is really, really going to happen in the future. Each will receive their praise from God. Ang bawat isa ay may kanya-kanyang pananagutan sa Panginoon. Nakakatakot po yan, no? Pag inisip po natin. Pag humarap na tayo sa Diyos, pag humarap na po ako, for example, sa Panginoon, hindi ko kasama yung core team. Hindi ko kasama si Brother Sam, hindi ko kasama si Sister Angie, si Sister Marga. Hindi ko sila kasama. No? Wala akong padrino. Lalong hindi ko kasama si Brother M. Pag humarap ako kay Lord, isa lang po ako. Pag humarap po tayo kay Lord, hindi natin yung mga ladies na nagdi-discipleship. Hindi na nakasama si ang ate Marga ninyo. Paharap kayo kay Lord, mag-isa na lang po kayo. Okay? No? Pag humarap tayo kay Lord, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin, pss, pss, nasan yung mga taga-gaspel of grace? Tayo naman kayo dyan. Nasan na yung mga taga-GOG? No? Wala nang ganoon. No? Kuy, tulungan nyo naman ako, judgment, na sabihin nyo naman, may nagawa akong mabuti para sa inyo. Sabihin nyo naman, nag-serve ako kay Lord. Kuy, sabihin nyo naman kay Jesus na pinagpipray ko kayo araw-araw. Walang ganoon. Walang ganoon. No? When we come to Jesus one day, and friends, <laughs> Po, we cannot say anymore when we face Jesus one day, when we face Christ one day, Lord, alam mo, hindi ko ito nagawa kasi hindi yan tinuro sa amin eh. No? Lord, alam mo, hindi ko na-obey ang part na yan kasi Lord, ganito, at magbibigay tayo ng excuse. Hindi na po. Once we face Christ, once we face Christ, there's no one else. <laughs> there's no one else. It's just that spiritual reality that there is nobody else. It's just Jesus and us. And we will account for the life that Jesus gave us. Okay? This is so important. This is so important. No? And lastly, how are we going to break free from legalism? And externalism, no? How are we going to break free? Paano kapag Lord, bigay mo nga sa akin yung real thing? No? That my assurance of my salvation is not because of the church that I attend. My assurance of my salvation is not because of the friends, Christian friends I've got. My assurance of my salvation is not because of the evidence that you are real. But my assurance of my salvation is because of Jesus, of because of my faith in you. So how do we break free from legalism and externalism? No, simple lang. We have to do what? We have to what? We have to fix our thoughts on Jesus. We have to fix our thoughts on Jesus. Okay? Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Sabay-sabay po nating basahin. Therefore, Holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus. Hebrews 12 verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And again in Psalm 25 verse 15, my eyes are ever on the Lord, for only He will release my feet from the snare. The strong temptation is to put our confidence on the things that we do for God. Okay? That is legalism. To put our confidence, nilalagay natin yung ating confidence sa mga bagay na ginagawa natin para kay Lord. Ipo. Our confidence is in Jesus and what He has done for us. Now, I hope and pray that this, is, this, help, this will somehow be of help to us. Again, ano, I'm sharing with you something uh, that John MacArthur said dun sa kanyang commentary sa Hebrews. Sabi niya, as Christians, we do not need religious ritual because we have spiritual reality. Jesus said that now, that is, since He has come, anyone who wants to worship the Father truly must do so in spirit and in truth, not in rituals and ceremonies. There is no place in biblical Christianity for externalism because Christians have continual access to spiritual reality. 
all of us at times are tempted to think that our works and our religious trappings are all important. Even when we know better, we often feel most comfortable. We feel religious in traditional, familiar worship settings. And when we perform certain religious acts or good deeds that we believe are particularly pleasing to God. No? Are particularly pleasing to God. So, do we feel confident dun sa standing natin sa Diyos? Kasi tayo, tayo ay nagsilbi sa Lord. Do we feel confident dun sa standing natin sa Panginoon dahil tayo ay nagtuturo ng salita niya? Dahil tayo ay nagsisilbi, gumagawa tayo ng mabubuti? Kung ganoon po, then we are still into trappings, externalism. Do we feel we have good standing before God? No? Dahil, no po, dahil tayo po ay present pag church, no? It says, ito pong sabi niya, no? Sabi niya, We know and accept God's free grace complete in Christ, but we hang on to some form of artificial legalism instead of living a positive, Christ-controlled and spirit-energized life. Considering and experiencing Christ's sufficiency should shatter all legalistic efforts, whether Judaistic or any other kind. For Christians to hang on to earthly religious trappings not only is unnecessary and pointless, but it is spiritually harmful. To do so keeps us from experiencing the fullness of our new relationship with God and from being able to follow Him as faithfully as we ought. These things are barriers, not means to blessing. It is not just the unsaved who need to consider Jesus. Believers also, no matter how much sure, need to consider Him in everything that they do. You know, last Friday, nagkaroon tayo ng prayer and fasting dito sa church. And, ang ganda-ganda ho ng ginawa ng Lord. Sobra. No? Ang ganda. So, ah, uh, Actually, sabi nga namin, grabe Lord, itong first, kasi ang lakas ho ng ulan. Ang lakas ng ulan. Nakakarating kayo mga tao, eh, pag malakas ang ulan, malamig, mas mahirap mag-fast. Kasi giniginaw ka eh. No, giniginaw ka, tapos lalang ang tingit na nung ano, mga kalam na yung tiyan mo. Parang, ah, gusto mo nang magkape. Gusto mo nang may naman ng mainit, ng tsaa, ng milo, kasi giniginaw ka na. No? It still happened. We, the, ano po, no? the Lord still allowed some of the burden to come here. This is the real thing. And what's the real thing? No? It was very, very simple. Kung isipin po natin, what did you do in those two and a half hours no, of prayer? It was really very simple. Nag prayer, nag kumanta lang tayo ng worship, tapos uh, merong word, no, tungkol sa spiritual purposes ng fasting. And then after that, we just gathered into fours, four, groups of four. Then, yun lang, just let the Spirit of God move in our midst, and one by one, sinashare na kung ano yung mga prayer items, prayer items. You know, one thing was so clear, presence of God. Presence of God. It is so near. No, it is so near, and if we were to uh, describe how it was like, yung moment na yon, no Friday, intimate, intimate. And there was no need to, alam mo po yun, no? sometimes, misan, akala natin, the louder we pray, the better. Hindi eh, no? I am saying that because... I, I used to have that thinking in the past now because nga yung Korean style of prayer natin noon noon. No? But this time, it was just the spirit moving. Dun sa kalagitnaan and we were just praying. And nakakatawa kasi hindi ka na nakoconcern kung anong sinasabi ng iba. Hindi ka na didistract kung anong pinagpapray ng iba. Tapos nagpapray lang isa-isa. No? Ito lang yung nakakatawa. Nakakatawa kasi pag uwi namin ng bahay ni Brother M. No? And Kumusta yung prayer and fasting? No? And this is just really funny. And Brother Emma saying, Ang ganda ng ginawa ni Lord. Kaya lang ang haba ng holding hands. <laughs> Kaya lang ang haba ng holding hands. It's really, really Brother M, no? <laughs> kasi, one hour kasi yung prayer time.
time and holding hands kami lahat. No? And, you know, <laughs> sabi niya, kasi si Brother Sam, si, si, Le- si Leo, sabi niya, sila nakapatong yung kamay nila dun sa legs nila. Tapos ako, nakaganon, wala, napagod-napagod na ako. Sabi niya. Pero, sabi niya, pero hindi, maganda naman yung ginawa ni Lord. Ang ganda na. <laughs> Yan lang, napagod talaga ako sa holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you 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 see it. No, we know that. No, in the midst of that, we totoo tayo. <laughs> no, totoo tayo, and we know. Okay, the Lord was there. Eh. Totoo siya. Eh. Amen. Po, yun yung spiritual reality. Na Lord, hindi ko pagpapalit yung faith ko sa yon. Hindi ko pagpapalit, Lord, yung nakilala kita kasi. My heart has been transformed. No? And Lord, how can I deny your nearness? How can I deny your presence? Let's come before the Lord and let's prepare our hearts for the Lord's table. Let's just pray to God for a short while.